The K2 REST Service Broker is designed to help you integrate your K2 applications with REST-based service endpoints. In this lesson, we're going to use the REST Service Broker to create a service instance for a third-party RESTful web service, then expose it as a smart object so K2 can use it in smart forms and workflows. For the sake of time, I'm going to assume you are familiar with the individual components for a REST integration in K2, which are typically OAuth resources for security, K2 service instances, smart objects, and smart forms, REST endpoint services, and basic JSON descriptor files. However, when you piece all of these components together, the end-to-end -end scenario looks like this. You have a REST endpoint either sitting out in the cloud or somewhere within your corporate environment. You will then need to create a REST-based service instance in K2 to interface with the endpoint using a JSON descriptor file that documents the schema of the REST service you want to call based on the Swagger specification format. From there, you set up a smart object that enables the data from the REST service to be used within K2 smart forms, workflows, and smart wizards. With this demonstration, we're going to use a RESTful service endpoint provided by a weather service called Open Weather Map to provide data for current weather conditions and present it on a smart form. To make this work in K2, we must first build out a Swagger definition file which describes the JSON data object that is transmitted back from the call to the Weather Service's REST endpoint API. For the sake of time, building this file is beyond the scope of this video, but in a nutshell, the basic steps look like this. From the API provider, you're going to locate information about what their JSON object schema looks like. In this example, Open Weather Map provides this information off their site for each of the endpoints they provide. I'm just going to use the current weather endpoint in this demonstration, so let's look at that page for a minute. Not every provider is the same, but here we can see the JSON parameters described on this page. As with most REST service providers, for this call to work, we also have to create an account and retrieve an API key. I've already taken care of that task with Open Weather Map, but keep in mind, this is also where you would configure your OAuth settings to get your authorization token. However, we won't need to do that with this provider. With this information that's provided by Open Weather Map, we can use the online editor provided by Swagger at the following link visible here on the screen, or you can also download and install their editing tools locally to build out a descriptor file by using either the YAML format or you can use the Swagger JSON format. Either way, when finished with the editing, the file must be downloaded and saved in the Swagger JSON format for the service broker to read it successfully. You can visit www.swagger.io, which provides tools, example files, and more information on how to build a Swagger definition file. Also, be sure to review help.k2.com for more information about the REST service broker and how it works with your definition files to integrate a REST service with K2. Once you have your Swagger definition file ready, you can move on to create your service instance with the REST service broker. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the service object tester utility to create the service instance, which I also assume you're familiar with. It's a good idea to make sure you know where your Swagger definition file is located before you begin. As you can see, I have one for the Open Weather Map service located here on the desktop. Upon opening up the file, notice it is in the JSON format and it provides information for the endpoint location and a description of the JSON data object that will come back from the API call. Back over in the Service Object Tester utility, I'll open up the Service Object Explorer group and move down to the REST Service Broker. We can right click on the REST node and select Register Service Instance from the context menu that appears. Because Open Weather Map does not require the OAuth authentication mode, we can leave the default setting for authentication to impersonate, but keep in mind, this is where you will need to enter your resource information when configuring a service that requires OAuth. All I need to do for this service instance is basically provide the location for the descriptor file, which if you recall was on my desktop. I'll go ahead and paste that information in. And the rest of the settings can be left as they are. You can find more information about these options in the documentation for the REST service broker off of help.k2.com. Let's move on to the next window. 
Here, I'm just going to leave these settings at their default for now and add the new service instance to the K2 environment. OK, with that successfully added, let's check out what it created. Under the REST broker category here, we now have a service instance for Open Weather Map. Under that node, the broker created service objects that were defined based on the entities within the JSON descriptor file for clouds, wind, and so forth. The endpoint method we want to call is actually a part of the weather object and it's called getWeather. When we call this with our smart object, OpenWeatherMap will return a serialized JSON-based response and K2 will make it available in the return parameters shown here. We can get to the values that are in this serialized data by calling the deserialized methods provided by the entity service objects for the corresponding return parameter. To understand this, let's go over to K2 Studio where we'll start building our smart object. K2 Studio will give us more flexibility to customize and return the properties we want from the getWeather method in our smart object. What I mean by that is this. Because the getWeather method returns weather data in serialized JSON format, it is initially harder to get to the weather properties from that method alone. We want to make it easy for our form designers to get to this data, so we can use method chaining to extract weather values out of the serialized data and expose the properties we want like current, high, and low temperatures and things like humidity. I do have a project ready to go, and I have already created an empty smart object named weather to speed things up. My requirement is to be able to call get weather from a smart form loaded up on a mobile device and display the current weather conditions for the device's current location. We won't need any of the default CRUD methods listed here at the bottom, so let's remove all those methods from the list. Then we'll add the getWeather method from our open weather map service object by going into the add method option here in the menu at the top of the page. To set up method chaining, we will need to run this wizard in advanced mode, so I'll put a check in that box and move on. Let's call this method getCurrentWeather. We can set it to be a read method because it is an HTTP get endpoint based on the definition from our descriptor file. We can go on to the next screen. In here, we don't need to manually add any parameters, so let's move on to the service object methods add screen. From here, we can add the getWeather service object method. To get to the method we want, we can drill down into the context option for this line, open the service object servers grouping, then we can go down where we find the getWeather method available under the open weather map service object. It can be found under the weather object type. Okay, I'll add that. Mapping input parameters and return properties is next. To make this easy, I'm just going to select create all and have K2 create all the parameters for me and automatically bind them. Upon reviewing what we just did, we can see the parameters and return properties are automatically set up for us to call getWeather. Now, if we publish the smart object at this point, when we call getWeather, we will get serialized JSON objects back in each of these return properties. We need to make this a little more meaningful for our form designers at this point. This is where method chaining comes into play. For demonstration purposes, I just want something like current weather description with an icon and maybe current temperature on a smart form. To get to these values, I know from building the descriptor file that they live in the main and weather return properties. So I need to run each of those values through their respective deserialized methods to get those properties out. Let's start with the weather property. I'll add another method here and go down to the weather object type. Now, I know that this particular property is a serialized array by definition, so I actually need to select the deserialized typed array method here, which will also give me the ability to create the specific return properties I want. Of these properties, I really only want description and icon, but I'll select create all here to create all the properties for our smart object, and then clear the ID and main binding because I'm not going to use those values. This is where the deserialized values for description and icon will land when this method is called. From there, they can be dropped into smart forms and workflows much easier. The input value for this method needs to be assigned to the weather property that comes out of the getWeather method we just configured. 
So let's grab that. I want to do the same thing for the main return property from GetWeather so we can get to the temperature and humidity values. This JSON object is not an array, however, so we can just call the deserialize method under the main service object. I'll select create all. Then we also need to pass in the main serialized return property from the getWeather method for the input here. I'll set that up. And that should do it. I can finish this wizard out. Let's take a look at the results of this step. As we built this chained method, the actions we took created the smart object properties for us shown here. When we call getCurrentWeather now from a smart form, these properties will be populated according to the order in which the chained methods run. To lay it out, the serialized return properties of the direct call to open weather map like wind, weather, and base are populated, then we push those values through the deserialize methods which populate properties such as temp, pressure, and humidity. This is the process you'll take when working with serialized JSON objects. The nice thing is, now we only have to call one method to pull in data from the REST endpoint and deserialize it into the values we need for our application. Let's take a look at a simple form I've created that calls this method and displays the weather on a mobile device. I have an instance of my phone screen opened up to a smart form page showing a view that has the K2 location services control embedded in it. This control gets location data from a mobile device that has location or GPS services enabled. From that control, we can feed the current longitude and latitude values into a rule on the view that executes the current getWeather smart object method we just created. That method brings the data back from open weather map and drops it on the page as you can see. Using simple formatting capabilities, we can display current conditions using the icon, temperature, and description return properties. I want to show you what the rules on that view look like to provide some context on how we got here. I have K2 Designer opened up to the location view used on that form. Notice I put a location services control at the bottom of the view and drop data label controls near the top to show weather data. I created a rule based on the location services changed event that fires when the mobile device moves around. When this event fires, it will call the actions to set the map view, then execute the get current weather method from our smart object. Let's review that configuration really quick. On this configuration screen, I'm just basically loading up the latitude and longitude values from the location services control over here on the right in the context browser. For the demo, I stored my app ID for open weather map in a K2 environment variable under the miscellaneous group, and we loaded that in as well. And that's it for this wizard. So going back, to get the data labels to show the data I want, I actually used the transfer data action. And here, I built the HTML image tag for the icon to appear as an image. This data label has the literal setting enabled for this to work. The temperature comes down from open weather map in kelvins, so I set up an expression to convert to Celsius, and then I just drop the description field in over here. That's pretty much it. So, in review, we can get data from a RESTful service using the REST service broker with a Swagger JSON descriptor file, pull the data in from the endpoint, deserialize down to the properties we want, then use them on a form. This constitutes a get method, but we can also post back to a REST endpoint to update data using the REST broker, and at this point in time, as you work with the REST broker, we recommend using a JSON-based payload. We would like to thank you for watching this demonstration, and we hope it shed a little more light on how to use the K2 REST broker in your applications.